Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of Colts Coffee and Conversation. My name is Carl. And I'm Holly. I'd like to welcome you back to another exciting edition of Colts Coffee and Conversation. How are you, Holly? I am doing well, thank you. Excellent. Once again, guys, just want to let you guys know we understand that we're all in our quarantine together. And in this quarantine, we can grow. Yes, all you Colts and Ice in quarantine. Quarantine with Colts Coffee and Conversation. Well, yeah, that just gives you more time to be listening as you're doing your walk around the neighborhood. Or not, or just being a good lad or ladess. Lassie. Lassie, sorry. And uh, just hanging out with a fire. Yeah, so when you're when you're done with all your, your, coffee. N- what, your Netflix binging. Ugh. Uh, oh, okay. No, I'm already over it. Uh-huh. That's why I went to Amazon Prime today. Yeah, so he switched from Netflix to Anna, An- Am- A- Anaheim, 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 Anaheim Prime. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm prime time. Ooh, very <laughs> nice. <laughs> ah, that's so funny. Sorry. Okay. So anyway. Yes. Yes. This is a perfect time to catch up on all those episodes, or maybe tons you thought, of episodes. Maybe you thought, eh, that doesn't sound very good, but they're you can good. Try, they're all good, and you can try it out. Yes, I highly recommend M Lab because that's more of a personal note. Yes, that is my life as a Baptist. Yes, that's a very good one, and of course, our original ones. What did we make? Fun of Zebagwan, which is me, of course. Yes, Holly. M-Lab, I enjoyed every moment of it. Delicious, glorious, excellent. Shut up. All righty. Yes. Quiet, Bagwan. Sit down there. Shh. Do some yoga. Anyway. <laughs> <clears throat> Meditate. All right. Okay, so... Once again, guys, you know, we do appreciate the fact that you guys do f- leave us feedback. Give us five stars. You know the little pink icon? Because we all know you're Apple people. But if you're in the Rebellion and you actually have a Samsung, there's other ways. Just find us on that stupid iPod I- iPod, stupid podcast icon there and click on it. Look, Colts Coffee and Conversation. Like it. Five stars. Tell us good things. Tell us bad things. Uh, quite frankly, as long as you give us the five stars, I really don't care what you say. But anyway, give us the five stars. We're going to climb up the algorithm of arts and crafts. No, no arts and leisure. Art? No, no. It's, ha! Uh, <laughs> society and culture. Ooh, society and culture. Right. Okay, so, and by the way, guys, if you want to reach out to us, of course, we do have a, quite a few measures that you can do so. We have the Facebook fan page at Colts Coffee and Conversation. We have our Instagram at Colts Coffee Convo. We have the Twitter account. Our handle is at Colts Coffee Con 1. That is Colts Coffee Con and the number 1. And we have our email address, if you're old school like that, at Colts Coffee Convo at gmail.com. But wait, there's more. Holly, let us know another way they can reach out to us. You can take your voice memo. Make a little memo to us, speak your mind, and then send it off to Colts Coffee Convo at gmail.com. Beautiful. All righty. You ready to get into, oh, wait. Once again, before we get into the conversation about our cult, what are you drinking? What is in your coffee? Well, since we still are not really free, well, you know what? We are free to roam around, but uh, we haven't done the Starbucks thing. And we mm. haven't done anything else but stay home. <laughs> Plus, you know, spending money at this point is probably not as prudent as it could be. Good word. Prudent. Mm-hmm. So we are home, and I've got the hazelnut Keurig, and I have that wonderful ice cream creamer that I'm using. Beautiful. I'm Major Dickinson's blend. Are you just having it black? Sometimes. Okay. But, uh, of course, I like the sweet cream. So, yes, very, very, very disappointed. Just kidding. Oh, that's right, because there's no drip. There's no the drip in Fullerton, no Spanish lattes, no they don't even funky have walk jazz in? music. They, well, what's the point of, I don't want to get a Spanish latte to go. Oh, okay, I'm just that's giving horrible. you a choice. You I like staring at the flower that they give me. Or the bloom, or the well, bomb explosion, make, they or whatever it, they put can't it Can't they on. make it in the to-go cup? But you need space for that. Okay, I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> you my so much. All right, okay, enough crying. All righty. So, we, of course, we are covering Synanon, Synanon, as uh, it's professionally known as, Synanon. We kind of went through the little back, uh, the little back, uh, 
What am I thinking of? Background <laughs> of the leader, <clears throat> which is uh, Dietrich. What's his first D- name? Dietrich. Dietrich. His Charles. His first name is Charles. Charles in charge. Yes, uh, Mr. Dietrich, Charles Dietrich. Now, we talked about a few things about uh, it as how they were kind of living by very pretty much the seat of their pants. So we're going to go ahead and continue on, and we're going to learn about uh, how he pretty much was able to get a bunch of users and, uh, not users, followers, by them being users. Okay. Yes, all righty. Okay, so here we go. Now, on the wall of a lifesaver called U.S. Hang Tough, and Dieterich pulled on everyone to stay, promised that a great future would emerge. Now, when the members kicked drugs and their sickness disappeared, and like we covered in the last previous episode, that they were told that their problems were uh, because they still loved their mothers. That's very interesting. Now, addicts' behaviors uh, and past lives were attacked viciously in games. Now, members were told that their lives depended on staying. Okay, contacts with family were, of course, prohibited. That sounds oddly familiar. Interesting. Most cults have that <clears throat> rule. Yeah, something to hide. A system of rewards and punishments were applied. Publicly, one was uh, berated for misdeeds, and this was uh, designed to affect the behavior of those also watching. Right. So if you punish those in front of all, it's a warning. Do not step out of line. Yes. Now, experts agree the system was brainwashing or thought reform. Now, Dietrich is credited for coining a specific phrase that we were shocked that uh, came from this guy. Holly, would you like to tell him the phrase? Yes, it's today is the first day of the rest of your life. Wow, that came from Synanon. Yeah, I was thinking it was possibly from someone like Robert Schuler, but ah, it is not. It does sound like a Schuler thing, isn't mm-hmm. it? Mm. But it's not, unfortunately. It's from Synanon. Teacher preached, act as if, which meant do not try to reason why Synanon asked them to do something. Just trust what they were told and act as if it was right. Yes, trust the process. Mm, Beautiful. Now, in 1962, Dietrich moved on to an empty National Guard building on the beach in Santa Monica. I'd like to do that. I'd like to go find an empty building and just say, this is mine, and just plop on the (laughs) beaches of Santa Monica. Well, I don't think you would like it. It's too rugged. You'd like your creature comforts. True, but at least I have a starting point. Now, neighbors complained fearing Synanon would unleash non-recovered addicts to Santa Monica. <laughs> They've been to Santa Monica now. Uh, who had came from other areas. Now, Dietrich was arrested for operating in Santa Monica without a health license and out of zone. Now, he was convicted. Rather than moving as a condition of probation, he chose to go to jail. Look at that. Three hots in a cot. This made him a public hero, and Governor Edmund Brown Sr. signed a Save Synanon bill, giving Synanon an exempt from health license laws. Mmm, the 60s in California. Beautiful. Synanon was allowed to have members kick addiction, cold turkey, without drugs, and we kind of discussed that a little bit in our previous episode, how it's not really nice to to uh, uh, watch people go through that because it's pretty bad. Uh, Monetary donations came from the rich, and of course Hollywood had to be involved, as guys like Robert Wagner, I don't know who that is. Oh, no, he was was married to... Doris Wagner? No, okay, go on. Okay, when, when when it gets you, let me know. Leonard Nimoy, I know who that is. Leonard Nimoy is also known as Mr. Spock. Yes. Okay, and then we have uh, Ben... Gazzara. Gazzara. He was a TV star. Yes. What would you say it was, the rifleman? Uh, no, that no? was someone else. Oh. Uh, ben Gazzara, I believe he was in uh, Ben Casey. Okay. Dr. Ben Casey. Ah. Now, he came to send it on to play the game. Now, we're going to get in a little bit about the game in just a second. They got to play the game with ex-addicts and ex-hookers. And they're ex-hookers because they only took donation. That was a joke, Holly. Thank you. All right. 
Life Magazine did a 14-page photo spread shoot, and Columbia Pictures made a movie called Synanon, which was released in 1964. Now, what was you? You said you can see it on YouTube? It is on YouTube for free. It is terrible. The acting is awful. But you said someone was... Oh, that's what we're talking about. You said... Chuck Connor. Chuck Connor was in that movie, who was from The Rifleman, which yes. I do not know. Well, he was very popular in those days. Beautiful. It was a very popular... TV show. Yes, Western. Ah, oh, Western. So, that was recently 64. Now, with sudden fame, by early 64, Synanon had also become an alternative community, attracting people with the emphasis on living... A self-examined life as aided by the group of truth-telling sessions, also known as, once again, the Synanon Game. Now, with its new wealth, they started building its first city in Marin County, known as... Tom no, it's it's in Marin County, but it was Tamales Bay. Tamales, I almost said Tamale Bay. Tamales Bay. It looks like Tamale. Now, professionals, even those without drug addictions, were eagerly invited to join, uh, provided that, of course, they transferred all their assets to the organization. Control over members uh, occurred through the Synanon game, or the game, which was also known as uh, per short. Now, considering a therapeutic tool uh, linked to the group therapy, or a social control in which members humiliated one another, and encourage the exposures of one's innermost weaknesses, or both. Members were to confess in games, and no secrets were allowed. Now, Holly, you've done some research. Yes. And uh, you have some very interesting uh, factotums, or factoids, in regarding the game. And also, there's another thing that they also called and used was the trip. Yes, yeah, so let's go through both of them. Please. So the game, in my opinion, at this point, doesn't sound very uh, appealing no. to me. No, ma. But it was, I guess, a way of Control. breaking them down and mm. controlling them. And they probably already felt pretty low because they were addicts. Okay? Right. So the game is a line with no lines. Beautiful. Border with no borders. Well, that's kind of a contradiction because that means you can move the lines at any time. Of course. Group setting where everyone can challenge each other and tear each other down. That sounds lovely. They played the game in which anyone was allowed to say anything, true or not. And they would say it to someone to cause an effect. Only the threat of violence was prohibited. Mm. It was a game because one being gamed could turn the game on another. Addicts' behaviors and past lives were attacked viciously in games. Members were told their lives depended on staying. Contacts with family were prohibited, and a system of rewards and punishments was applied. Publicly, one was berated, or they called it haircut. They gave him a haircut for misdeeds, and this was designed to carry him off and affect behavior of those watching. Hmm. Okay, so it's basically... Influence though those people to submit into what Synanon wanted them to do. Right. And they would have consequences if they did not. Ah, yes. Dietrich and Yablonsky acknowledged that the system was brainwashing or thought reform, as described by Dr. Robert J. Lifton. Mm. Synanon did have a member named Steve Simon, and in his... Harvard dissertation, it was the danger of being a participant observer is that you may be converted. Mm. Okay. Well, Simon, not heeding what he wrote, later went to prison for destroying evidence unfavorable to Synanon. Beautiful. The main thing is, Diedrich said, freedom to think to a dope addict was like a gun to a baby and they wash dirty brains. Diedrich is credited with coining the phrase, as we said, today is the first day of the rest of your life. Beautiful. That sounds like fun. And, of course, people from Hollywood were not susceptible to the game. They just got to do it, but I'm pretty sure they wouldn't. So, obviously, return. the game was pretty radical, and so he had to come up with something a little bit different for the non-addicts. And these are people that he wanted to have them follow him Get involved because of their money. Of course. Okay. So he created something called the trip. Mm. 
this is going to be a little a little lengthy. Let's see if we can get through it. Let's do this. Okay. Dietrich experimented with environmental manipulation so as to recreate the heightened awareness and inner discoveries he experienced while taking LSD. So he, they weren't dropping acid, but what he did was in the environment that he took them through, he was trying to manipulate their experience. So whether it be darkness, light, uh, smells, fear, I don't know, joy, we'll, we'll go through this. Right. So in order to recruit needed non-addict club members, Dietrich created The Trip, and it's a forerunner of Warner Earhart's EST training, mm. which was a combination of group psychotherapy, coercive persuasion, mysticism, and old-fashioned spiritual revival. Tell it on the mountain. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Dietrich designed an efficient program of individual emotional breakdowns followed by a mass group, Euphoria, all designed to re-educate individuals into Synonym 2 philosophy and lifestyle. It was first offered to the selected few as an honor, but the entire population was eventually targeted. Diedrich called it an insight-producing experience. Mm. Diedrich said, at the end of this rainbow, there will be a pot of gold. Through dissipation or long hours of activity without very much sleep, we hope to bring about in you a conscious state of inebriation. We want to get you loaded without acid. Of course. I love that. The long hours of activity without very much sleep. That reminds me of a specific group that has a lot of uh, holdings within buildings. But let's continue. Yes, sleep deprivation is one of the red flags of a cult. Yes. Okay, he also continued and said, you will learn more about yourself, your fellow man, the world and nature of reality in one weekend than you would in four years. Let your ego go. Let things happen to you. It's a feeling of closeness to each other. We are after the death of ego. So a reference point for the rest of your life. You may change your value systems, notions about life, and viewpoints about people. It will produce a new breed of human beings with greatly expanded potentials. If you do your best, you cannot fail. Interesting. Hmm. So, with those words, they would sign up, and at 7 p.m. on a Friday, the chosen trippers, around 50 in number, of all ages, were Scary. met in the Del Mar lobby by people dressed in long white robes and yellow silk scarves. A shepherd led them through a candlelit and incense-burning corridors to a locker room filled with rows of army cots with name cards. Every person stripped and put on white robes. Watches were taken as time was no longer important. Women removed all makeup and jewelry, a symbolic stripping of past selves. Now we had guides. So the guides all experienced game players. They turned each group from enthusiasm to a depression and defeat. Wallowing in its collective shame, sitting in comfortable green armchairs, they made the dope fiends tell their tales of drug, rape, crime, and beatings. The squares, which were the people that obviously were not addicts. The squares were pushed to confess their prior loneliness and despair. The games turned on one then, then another. Disoriented by lack of sleep, each was moved to the point of intense disillusionment. Aides who did their homework provided ammunition to the conductors on each tripper. Everyone to, was to cop out or confess to past sins. The result was an implantation of a common bond and sense of ideals, all identified with synonym. Each tripper was to write a paper on some feeling or admission. A big shot would advise the trippers that they were not really chosen as an honor, but each was really selected because each was a, a resistor, thinking he or she knew better than the direction Synanon should go, part of the dummies that hold Synanon back. Maybe, Diederich said, one day we will just put dingbats like you against the wall and wash them off and bring them back into the human race. Interesting. There was the Witching Hour, which features a Ouija board to be operated by witches, two women in black and white robes. The board would spell out Emerson messages on self-reliance, 
that self-reliance was interpreted as the ability to make choices and the best way to end loneliness and suffering was through trusting in Synanon. They would adopt the Synanon family or the fifth circle in Dante's hell where tormented souls are terrorized and torn awaited them. When the first tripper, physically and emotionally exhausted or broke and wept, it caroomed to the others. Crying, trippers embraced feelings, euphoria, and transcending love. Hmm. The conductor made it clear this was the resistor's last chance, their last hope. The game took on each unbroken, dirty, rotten story with great brutality. AIDS returned with smut obtained from the unbroken spouses to use. The broken joined the attack. Some trippers began to hallucinate, having achieved LSD replicated altered state of consciousness. Fighting to stay awake, defenses wiped away, the unbroken broke and asked for forgiveness. Some rolled up on the floor in fetal positions. Some laughed, others howled and sobbed. Some cried for their mothers. When they asked for friends, they were hugged in mass. All thought the experience was beautiful. Diedrich would elsewhere declare that if you kept people up long enough, you can make them believe anything. Dang, he admitted it. Beautiful. At 8 a.m. Monday, hand in hand, the trippers went down the corridor toward the sounds of band music. Now in a ballroom, the trippers were surrounded by hundreds of cheering, clapping Sinonites. The trippers, many of whom had been awake for 65 hours or more, were hugged and cheered. A hoop-la-la began, a Sinanon dance. Everyone bonded. All had pain. One just had to surrender to Sinanon. Teachers, lawyers, doctors, police, politicians, all got hooked, many forming an allegiance previously not matched in their lives to the group and trainers that trained them. The trip was so successful that in only its second year, the lifestyler's business contributed $500,000. Wow. Despite the trip conversion success, the old timers, the retired dope fiends, a.k.a. what he would call the walking dead, remained a problem. As the alcoholics had not wanted to change, neither did they. Curing dope fiends was what they wanted. Dietrich placed them in a 72-hour game he called a stew Ugh. and harangued them for not seeing his vision. Later, the flies, and that would be the Dietrich trained youngsters took over the attack and when all were exhausted Dietrich returned and offered forgiveness for surrender wow well that sounds like a fun weekend yeah and they paid good money for it apparently so okay so guess what folks this just got interesting so uh yeah there we go guy openly admits that he's trying to brainwash you beautiful well holly what do you think so far? I'm glad I didn't get involved. Why? Do you have a story to tell? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> you got a story to tell about sitting on? Beautiful. Please share. Alrighty, guys. Well, there you go. Uh, you marinate on that stew. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, once again, guys, want to say just, uh, just hang in there with us, guys. You wonderful cultonites out there. Give us five stars. Let us know what you think. Give us all the feedback we can. More encouragement, the merrier. Hang in there, guys. On that note, good night, Holly. Good night, Carl. <laughs>